I'm Joe from iteachapple.org. Welcome back to Planet Hyperstudio. As you can see, today I'm talking to you from inside an aquarium. Cool, huh? <laughs> the reason I'm here is because today I'm going to begin teaching you one of my favorite features in Hyperstudio, animation. This is where you can really show off your creativity. No artistic skills are required. It's fun and it's easier than you think. So, launch HyperStudio now, open up a new stack, and we will begin. All right, so we're here today to talk about animation. So let's get started. I expect you've already got HyperStudio open and you're ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is animate something. Like with most things, we start by creating a button. So we'll just put this over here, double click, get our inspector. And we're going to click on actions. Places to go, things to do, we want to do something, we want to play an animation. So let's go play an animation. Now I think maybe I went over this a little bit with you once before, we'll go a little more detail. You have to select what you want to animate. You can choose something that's already on the card that you're with. You can create just a graphic object, and you can create you can use a sequence of images which is creating your own animations, original animation, that's what we're going to get to uh, later on in this episode. Or you can pick a, this is a movie or an animated GIF which is already pre-made. I'm going to teach you how to make your own animated GIFs within Hyper Studio. it's very easy. But let's just start with the simplest and we'll do a simple graphic from the library. So I click on that it's going to give me the library. Let's just choose something. We'll go with this. And this is what we're going to animate. So I'm going to, I'm on a trackpad here. It's a little easier with a mouse, but that's okay. I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to hold, I'm going to click the mouse, hold the mouse down, and then make a path. Okay, so watch what I do, and then you'll get a chance to do it. So pressing on the mouse. Now I'm moving this. See how it's showing the path? And you can adjust the path if you want. I'm going to go all the way off the screen. Okay, and I hit return, or I think escape might work too. And there's your path. So there's a few things you need to see. Let's look at the inspector again. I'm going to go continue. And these are all the different things you can do with such a path. You can make it repeat over and over again, in which case as it goes to the end, it will if, if it it'll go through to the end and then it'll start over again on this side. So you may want that. You can just play it one time and that's it. For some things that's all you need. Let's make it non-stop. You can change the path if you want, a new path. Let's erase, it says, show first frame. Right now you can see the beginning of it right there. Well, you might not want that just sitting there because you may have other things on your page to do and then you, before you start that animation. So I'm, I like to uncheck that and it'll appear when I need the animation to be there. Allow in clones, you can, every, you can make it create, recreate the same animation over and over again. And so let's go up to path options right here. And what's going on here is that this is this is the line that represents the path you just created. Now, you have you may want the path to continue or to turn around and go back. So if I ch check this if I click on this arrow, that means it's going to go and then come back. So let's preview that, click that, there's the path, move this out of the way, 
and now it's going to turn around and come back. And I think I did I tell it to do it non-stop? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, well we can stop it. Go back to the inspector. Now if you have graphic objects on your page, you this overall under all thing the purpose of that is you can make your object go in front of or behind other objects. Talked about layers before. But we'll we'll, we'll do more with that later. So let's just click OK. And go up to our browser tool and select go, but of course nothing's happening because we haven't pushed the button. Push the button and there's your animation. And it's going to turn around and come back, of course. And it will do that non-stop until I go up and tell it. Either you go to another page or you just get out of it. Now there's another way to do this. Lots of ways of doing this. I'm going to delete this button. I don't need it anymore. So let's just click on the card, double click, and it gives you this. Things to do when arriving at this card, leaving card, or clicking on the card. You can set a card to be a giant button. So you click anywhere on the card and it activates something. So let's go to arriving at this card. And we're going to play an animation. And let's pick a simple graphic, something different. Apple. Double click on it and we'll make an apple. Uh, let's make it go down here like it fell out of a tree. Okay, so here's the card inspector, but for what we're doing we don't really need it. I just want to show you this one thing where we go to the browser and as soon as I activate the browser this apple came falling. So if I go out of this, if I quit out of Hyper Studio, I'll come back to this stack, hit the browser immediately, there it goes. The, uh, the apple falls. All right, I admit that's boring. You probably want to see something more like what you saw in the aquarium at the beginning. So let's create a button, click OK, continue and we want to play an animation right here check that and this time we're going to choose the animated gif which I'll show you how to make your own later which is much more exciting I'm going to click on this balloon and go add to button and it wants me to draw the path let's get this out of the way I think this one just spins if you let it. Let's see. Go all the way off the thing and return. Okay, and then we have our same animation tools before. Let's just preview this, see if it's working okay. See, yeah, it spins around. So you could just leave it there if that's what you want to do. Have somebody bungee jump <laughs> from it. So here's a few things that you can do that I didn't show you before. Again, we'll go to we'll put this on path repeats, put it on non-stop, so it'll just keep floating around the sky. And I'm turning off show first frame. We talked about that before. Well, let's go up to path options. And here what you can do is, if you remember I showed you, we can turn this around and it'll go back. But there's another thing we could do is if you have other objects on the screen, you could have your animation go in front of and behind. So I'm going to show you that right now. 
So let's go OK. First I have to give you an object. OK, I went to the library and got this giant rock or a mountain or something to show my point here. This is a graphic object. It's not flattened to the background. So now when I push the button here, my balloon flies around. It's flying in front of it. But watch what I do here. Let's go back to the inspector. Go back to play animation. And we'll go under all on this way and over all on the other way. Click OK. Go out of that. Go to the, press the button. Now, yeah, see how it goes behind the rock? It's kind of like the way you're the fish did. It should be coming out the other side. It's going to turn around, and this time it's flying in front of the rock. Okay? Good. All right, I think that's enough for today. I'd like you to go through this again and practice. Try to create different animations, get creative, and maybe uh, if you have questions, email me joe at iteachapple.org and um, looks like this is going to be a three-parter. Next time we're going to make the aquarium. We'll start with that and then there's uh, some other animation techniques that we should get into so it's probably going to be a three-parter. I look forward to seeing you again and I look forward to our next episode. And Don't forget to share, like, comment, give me feedback. I'd love to hear from you.